Hi there, I'm Steve Kaufman. Move my uh, blue snowball a little closer. I promised that I would do these videos on how I went about learning these different languages. So uh, I'll handle a few in this video and then um, see how many we get done. Italian. Italian is an absolutely beautiful language. It's a beautiful country. It's a country that's made an amazing contribution to to history, to the culture of the world and stuff like that. I mean, who doesn't want to learn to speak and understand and enjoy Italian? So in the early 90s, uh, because I spoke French and Spanish, I decided that I would go after Italian. And what I did was I got a, a copy of a linguaphone set, 12 or 16 or 20, I can't remember how many cassettes. Uh, reasonably interesting story about an Italian family and what they did. And I just listened and read and and they had uh, word lists, and that's, I did my usual thing, listen, read, and work on vocabulary, and built it up to a, a sort of a level where I could stumble, I could read. I then went out and got a lot of readers in Italian. Some of them were bilingual texts, which I really don't like because I find it distracting to have to look at the whole translation, whereas really all I need is just a few words to be translated. So I did some reading in Italian, and I kind of had it there and and I think we might have visited Italy a few times and I sort of stumbled a bit in Italian and and it was never a major focus. Then about seven or eight years ago, all as a part of this whole, you know, discovering how convenient the mini disc player was and then the MP3 player, uh, and along the way I found this website called Il Narratore, which is a audiobook producer, uh, a wonderful family that lives near uh, near Verona, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Italy, and they produce uh, Maurizio, who is the voice, although he's not the only voice, and uh, they produce wonderful audiobooks, and he has a version of Pinocchio that's just so well done, and also um, I Promessi Sposi by Manzoni, which is the classical novel of Italian literature, and I just did a lot of listening to Italian. I can still remember being on holiday and jogging and listening to I Promessi Sposi. Ah, and it's just, it's a wonderful experience. And of course, the key in language learning is to have interesting content. Content drives language learning, to my mind, which is something that the producers of textbooks often don't realize. Uh, so I did a lot of listening. Um, I eventually started reading my first, the first novel that I read in Italian without link, without, because obviously I did a lot of work at link to work on vocabulary, but eventually, you know, you want to be able to read on your own without reference to dictionaries or anything else. And the first novel that I read in Italian was this one by Alberto Moravia, Gli Indifferenti. I mean, it was great. And there's a, it's always a great sense of achievement when you finally read that book on your own without anybody's help. Uh, so I just, uh, and, and of course we have a, a wonderful tutor at Link called Mariangela who lives in Rome and so I had lessons with her on Skype and uh, at first when we spoke because I was also doing Portuguese at the time, I was mixing up Spanish and Portuguese and everything else, but uh, with more listening and I listened to the content that was loaded up then at Link, we have our podcast and we have the material from Beppe Grillo who is a famous podcaster in Italy and with more and more exposure, it just got progressively better. And then last two Novembers ago, my wife and I spent a month in Italy and I was able to use my Italian, not as much as I would have liked because I was with my wife and we don't speak Italian to each other, obviously. She doesn't speak Italian. Um, but just being in that environment where no longer is it something that you're doing in a book or on a tape, you're actually in the environment. You're having coffee, you're uh, reading the newspaper, you're surrounded by Italian. And that just takes it up to that next level. So, and that's, that's basically it. I've never lived in Italy. The longest I've ever spent there was this one month where we traveled around, but I have done an awful lot of listening and reading. So that was my Italian. With regard to Korean, uh, just as I went after Italian because I had Spanish, I felt, you know, I like the sort of low hanging fruit approach. Uh, I know Japanese and Chinese, why don't I do Korean? So I started doing Korean the problem with Korean was that there I was starting absolutely from scratch. I mean, I was in Italian too in a way, but with Spanish, it's so, it's, it helps so much. Whereas Korean was more different from 
Japanese, and all the textbooks were extremely boring. Uh, integrated Korean, great thick book like this, full of all kinds of explanations, exercises, questions, useless notes about culture. I mean, I don't know, what is this? Beginning to culture, education in the school system in Korea. Who cares? All written in English, you know. Grammar, the clausal connective, background information, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, you know, the usable portion of the book is probably, you know, if this book is whatever it is, 336 pages long. There's probably 20 pages in here that are useful. And I have six of these books because we didn't have Korean at Link. And so I had to find whatever I could find. And I just, you know, ordered or found the books and just basically extracted the usable to me material, which is the content to listen to and read. And uh, yeah, there's some issues of patterns in Korean, which I did go over. And, and uh, one of the better books actually is produced here in, at UBC uh, by a fellow called Professor Ross King. I can't remember the name of it, but it, it would at least isolate a bunch of phrase patterns. So you didn't have to go through lots of lengthy explanations and diagrams. And certainly I never do any exercises. But mostly what I got out of that too was the content, and their content was better. I should get the book, uh, what was it called? Ross King, uh, it's, uh, what's the name of that publisher in Tuttle, Tuttle publisher in Japan, and they have a very good, uh, uh, you know, lessons to listen to. So I was actually able to listen to it many, 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 many times. But ultimately, there just wasn't enough interesting content in Korean to listen to. So I spent six months of lots of listening and reading and uh, I think my pronunciation is quite good and what I know I know but um, didn't uh, eventually just lost interest. Uh, I then went after Portuguese because it's so close to uh, Spanish and I used again this is prior to Link so I used the Teach Yourself books and and living language, and I found Portuguese more different from Spanish than I expect, had expected. It has, Portuguese has all kinds of, you know, ficar, and, uh, you know, instead of, uh, you know, you gosta do, you know, no, no me, not like me gusta something, gosta do, and uh, there are just a lot of things, mora, there's, there are quite a few things that are different, that kind of throw you off, and uh, plus, again, the content wasn't very interesting, so I was kind of stagnating, although I have recollections of uh, on our 60th anniversary, we, my wife and I went off uh, golfing and uh, I was jogging around listening to this uh, Portuguese, but I never really was able to get any traction. And uh, the following year we went to Portugal and I couldn't communicate, couldn't understand. And people just spoke to me in English. So, but then thereafter we got uh, Portuguese going at link. Ana Paula, who was my tutor, from uh, Brazil. She created a lot of good content about her life down there when she takes her twins to the zoo and buys them a candy and I don't know what else. 20 little short exercises that kind of I found interesting because I knew Anna Paula and she was also helping me via Skype. She was my tutor um, and very encouraging. And um, then we had this uh, Portuguese podcast on Link as well called Café Brazil which had a lot more words that I could learn. And, and uh, we, had, uh, uh, we had a learner from Portugal who translated my book and recorded it, or parts of it, so I listened to that. And I have never made any difference between Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese. I mean, I hear the difference, but I'm trying to learn the language. I'm trying to get exposed to the language. I'm trying to learn words. I'm trying to read and listen to interesting content. I don't care whether they have a Rio de Janeiro accent, a Sao Paulo accent, a Lisbon accent, it doesn't really matter much to me, I just listen to it all. Uh, a major breakthrough was when I discovered these uh, podcasts put out by uh, Radio Portugal, R RTF, I don't quite remember what it's called, TSF, RTP maybe. Uh, there was one uh, set of, of interviews uh, called, uh, um, I can't remember now, uh, at any rate, these are interviews that you can find, podcasts of massive archives of interviews, like literally hundreds. And uh, I listened to lots and lots and lots, lots here in Vancouver. And then I remember one particular occasion when I was driving from, from uh, just north of Munich to Portugal. It's 22 hours or so in the car. The whole way I just listened to these Portuguese interviews. 
very, very interesting interviews. And so gradually, the, you know, the brain starts to get used to it. And of course, I have a lot of the vocabulary from the Spanish and from having worked at it. And I have read Portuguese novels. I think the first novel I read was uh, one by uh, Paulo Coelho. And, uh, but I've read books in Portuguese. And that, that's another important thing to do. I'm not going to show you all the books that I've read, but it is, uh, it is an important thing to do, to get in there and read. So, as always, read and listen content. That's basically the, the approach I took to those languages. So, I'll stop there, and in the next, uh, in the next video, I'll talk about uh, whatever languages are left on my list. So, thank you for listening. Bye for now.